There'd be a lot of poop in my hands. <laughs> I've seen a six foot alligator go swinging through the air and slam into a tree. These guys are the scientists of the supernatural, lecturers leaving lessons for inquiring laymen. They are applying the scientific method to a world that baffles science. They are the cryptids of the corn. But who else has big black wings and red eyes? Um, Batman. Oh, Mothman. Oh yeah, Mothman. A great white shark was stolen. Oh, someone stole a shark? I got stuff for you you don't even know about. She's a witch. She turned me into a newt. Who knows? Anything could be possible. Anything could be possible. It's really big. Mm -hmm. Abduction vibes. Holy moly. It sounds like you were abducted. And it just stood up. I mean, it just like kept going and going. And she goes, what the... <laughs> I am the great and mischievous Mr. E. Misch ooh, mischievous. Or did you say mischievous? Either way, it's spooky. And I am... <laughs> spooky clone number 103J. Ooh. And together, we are cryptids of the corn podcast. Bum, 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 bum. And this week is actually at the end of the week is our two year anniversary. What? Yeah. Holy the moly. 20, holy moly. The twenty seventh is the first time we've uh I can't remember if it's the first time we recorded. Emily has it on the calendar, it's our anniversary. So it's probably the first episode we released. Uh, it's either released or recorded. Yeah. I can't remember when that day I remember the day. I remember we went and trucked through the woods. And we were looking for signs of Bigfoot, and then we were recording on a crappy mic. In a house full of dogs and a kid. with Yes, with one microphone and three of us surrounded it. Mm -hmm. We'll miss you, Nick. Shout out to Nick. He's Episode not, one. He doesn't, as far as I know, he doesn't listen to the podcast. Still, he's in, he's in our thoughts and our spirit. He's in the spirit of the mm -hmm. podcast. Mm -hmm. Episode one, live on in infamy. We should have invited him up today. Yeah, would he have made a trip? Two, if he didn't work, he would have. Shoot, yeah. Well, maybe we'll invite it him up. It snuck up on me. It did. Actually, it did. Two years? We, That's nuts. Yeah, because of the way we record. How are we? How has this been two years? There's tens of thousands of people that listen to the show. <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. Tens of thousands of people. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you guys. I remember uh, it took us six months to get more than 100 listeners. Well, you know, it's... it's just, and now there's tens of thousands of you guys. We're climbing the mountain, building the community. And we appreciate every one of you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So remember, if you can, share the show. It's the best way to help us grow. Huh. <laughs> Haven't heard that six times today. No. All right, guys. So for in honor of Halloween, uh, I got a little busy this past weekend, having to lock up the cabin in Michigan and all that stuff for winter. So I wanted to do kind of an easier episode on me as far as research and stuff like that. But also stay in the kind of vein of a Halloween stuff. Yeah. So we're going to do scary stories from the internet. So I gathered, most of these are from Reddit, and you can say whatever you want about Reddit stories. I think it is, there's a lot of fake stuff out there. Don't get me wrong. But I think it's a great format to people to publish their stuff anonymously. Yeah. And can get some good feedback. I can't say the word. Seth's going to love this episode. Oh my gosh. Don't. I'm sorry. He's the one that emailed us, so. So, anonymously. Is that better? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I don't know. Let's ask him. I'm sure we'll get a scathing email or something. I, I don't care. muted Jay for just a second. Uh, what, Jay 103. Uh, <laughs> I'm the spooky one. I'm going to be spooky today. So I, I pulled up a bunch of these stories. Uh, the first couple are the top most voted ones uh, for the Reddit scary stories. There's real scary stories or whatever it's called. Ooh. Uh, are we also, are we also going to like decipher if these you think they're actually real or not? We can. Okay. Uh, I've read through all of these, and none of them to me are the ones I picked screamed fakery. Okay. Uh, not at least hardcore. You know, you can argue back and forth whether, and I try to get a good hodgepodge of different, different paranormal and cryptid things. Okay. And you can try to tell me which ones you think they are. All right. You ready for the first one? Yep. And this was from, okay, Reddit user Mokashi. Huh? Mokashi. Mokashi. Okay. M O K S A S H A. I want to say why. Moksha. Moksha. 
Uh, Mysterious Visitors, the title. My entire childhood, my father and I used to take late night hikes due to his insomnia after working his shifts. Our neighborhood is considered a very safe and ultimately was an urban neighborhood. Besides one of the roads towards the back, which was in line with a thick forest for about a mile and a quarter deep, or it was about a mile long and about a quarter mile deep, which circled back on itself. All of the walks were very dear memories of mine, except one, which ended up being the last one. Ooh. Along the road, there was a tree or line of trees. There was a singular street light that illuminated a small plot of land that someone owned, but it was very overgrown and ill kept. It was very common for us to walk the road and enjoy the sounds of the forest and the lack of illumination and the ease of their circle and then circle back. One, or, uh, one ordinary night, we were walking, making conversation. My father abruptly stops, pulls me close, and puts his hands over my mouth. He crouches with me and points towards a singular illuminated plot roughly 100 yards away. Okay. At first, I didn't see anything, and I thought he was pulling my leg. But just as I began to post or protest his grips... I, was, I see a very small humanoid figure, roughly three feet in height, squar- or scrawny, with long limbs, and it materialized out of nowhere in the plot of bushes. And curiously, it, take, or it was taking in its surroundings before uh, singling, uh, signaling towards the bushes. So this thing just appears. D- like materializes Short, out of... Kind of guy-ish with long legs. Or arms, I'm sorry. Yeah. After a brief moment of what looked to be a discussion. Uh, all th- So sorry, I skipped ahead. After a few seconds, two other small humanoid figures materialized as well. After a brief moment of what appeared to be discussion, all three of them dashed back into the forest line. Once this happened, my father picked me up, threw me over his shoulder, and made a break for our house, which was roughly a half mile away. My father was 6'5 and 220 pounds. I was roughly 120 pounds at the time. He never showed signs of slowing due to his fear and adrenaline. After that night... We never took late night walks again. He installed four bright motion detecting lights around our plot of land. He bought home a dog to protect the outside. <laughs> After a few times, uh, I tried to bring it up. He just doesn't want to discuss it. He made it very clear he never will. Those figures still give me the chills. The image of all three of them huddled together is vivid still 15 years later. Dang. I wonder if he got a red healer. Probably. I mean, <laughs> that's the only logical have. choice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now... What do you what what cryptid or paranormal event comes to mind with this story? Who paranormal event? Yeah, I was gonna say. Well, no, I don't know about that. Uh, almost reminded me of like the, some of the CE five stuff, like with Stephen Greer, where the people are out in the middle of the field and like, these things appear. I, I'm not saying you're wrong. <laughs> like, honestly, it, it, that's the first thing I thought of. But uh, um. <sighs> Materializing, materializing out of nowhere. I was not really th- throwing a cryptid out at me, but I, I went Dover Demon first, like something like that. But so he didn't describe. She doesn't describe big heads or nothing like that, mm, right? Okay. You know, what well, she focuses on very short with very long limbs. Yeah, the long l- arms and legs, or uh, I'm sorry. So I'll read it again. Yeah, I see a very small humanoid figure, yeah. roughly three feet in height, scrawny, but with long limbs. Okay. Okay. So short, stocky body is what I imagine with long legs and long arms. Almost like an orangutan, except with oh. long arms or okay. legs. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that like a rake type creature, or I don't know what, what puck wedgies. Oh, yeah, that too. That's what. Oh so, man. Okay. Have you? Have anybody's ever seen the Hockamuck Swamp documentary? <coughs> Excuse me. I shouldn't have said the word. I guess. Yeah, got ya. This guy thought he had a Bigfoot encounter, mm-hmm. and he thought this this small, hairy, pot bellied creature comes out. Same thing. So it's a tree cut for the power lines in the forest. Okay. So it's, what did they describe? This one clearing in the forest yep. with one light. It's the exact same story in the Huckamuck Swamp documentary. This guy's walking his dog, and this thing comes out of the light. Mm. And it holds his arm out. He describes it almost the same. And he thought it was speaking some Native American words. Okay. But what he realized much later is saying, he thought it was saying, he wants you. He wants you. He realized it was saying, we want you. That's not good. And I was reaching his arm out to him. And obviously, he turned and walked away. Yeah, good choice. Don't be so, tempted. Very similar thing. I think uh, if a cryptid or some weird humanoid creature is ever speaking to you, 
Turn around and walk away. Except if it's a moth man. Don't, huh? Except if it's the moth man. Even, I don't care. Well, you should probably walk away because he's radiated. Radiated, yeah. I don't know. I just think like these things you are trying to, you have to invite or you have to accept their offer. I don't know. It's like being tempted by the devil. Like just walk away. Mm -hmm. Like many things in life. Just walk away. Walk away. So that was a puck wedgie story in my opinion. Not, yeah. Did, it, did she say like Harry at all? I don't no, know. very, most of these are very short. Right, yeah, yeah. But I, it's the materializing out of nowhere. Is, that's, you know, if this is true. I mean, there, like you said, there's no reason to believe like it's not true. You know, I'm mean, just kind of taking the story and taking their word for it. But let's just say, you know, entertain it. It is true. Man, that materializing out of nowhere is, I don't want to ever experience that. No, I'd be like, all right, burn the woods. <laughs> burn the woods down? Yeah. All right. I'll quarantine the county and uh, just burn it all to the ground. Oh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah, don't. You don't. can't trust him. You're right, yeah. You can't trust anybody at this point. <laughs> oh, my gosh, yeah. Like, girls, go sit in the car. <laughs> be Dad's right taking 100 gallons of gasoline and getting rid of everything. Yeah, this this with all the wildfires going on nowadays, maybe it's we probably, should, maybe we, Yeah, that's it's probably, probably what's going on. Yeah, It's probably people just like me see something run through the woods and be like, all right. Get in the car. Not playing this game. <laughs> I've seen too many scary movies. We're oh. not battling on even ground here. Guess what? You're not having a home. Have you seen that video? Um, it is kind of related. It's a scary story. From the, like the video of that, it is a, a wildfire, but there's that dark figure that runs through it and you can visibly see it. No. Oh, we'll have to look that up sometime. But it's like a, it's like a, I don't want to say like a, it's not a wildfire, but it's like a controlled, like forest yeah, fire. Uh, there's controlled burns. Right. I forget what that, yeah, controlled, controlled burns. burns. It's one of them. And you just, you know, it's moving through the woods, but you see this, and the guy's filming it, and you see this big dark figure sprinting through it. I used to help with the Wayne National Forest ones. Yeah. Controlled burns to help uh, kudzu and stuff like that, help yeah. limit some of the invasive species. Because mm -hmm. Ohio is supposed to have, like, quote-unquote, forest fires and brush fires. Yeah. I don't it's, think people realize that. It's a natural part of the environment. So what happens is a lot of our species, plant-wise, mm -hmm. even amphibians and stuff like that are fireproof as far as a normal wildfire forest fire. Mm-hmm. Like the trees are fine, right? Yeah, the trees are. It's gonna mostly be okay. just yeah on the ground. It's, it's getting all the brush on the ground. Even that stuff, the our native plants that burn, the yeah. root systems are fine. And fine, come back. yeah, yep. But the invasives normally are from tropical areas or more temperate areas where can't, they don't have them. Can't handle it, yeah, because it's so wet. You know, they don't normally have fires. Right, exactly. All right, are you for this one? Yep. Title: Ain't no bear. <laughs> okay, heard uh, this from redditor Kane zero seven one five four six. All right. My grandmother had a story from the late 50s. She was driving north on a paved road, two, uh, two-lane paved road, lined with small trees and brush with my great aunt and one of my uncles, Ron, who was about two years old at the time, in the back seat. They rounded a turn while climbing a series of switchbacks up a hill. She later said, I smelled it before we saw it. As they approached, it was standing beside the road, and down a couple of feet in the ditch. It was still much taller than the car by a couple feet. When my sister saw it, she grabbed me by the arm yelling, look, Barbara, look, it's a bear. And she replied, that ain't no bear. Mm. It stood there as they passed. It looked a very large, hairy, man-like thing with hair all over its face. The only its ears, lips, and eyelids lacked hair. What we struck or her most interesting was what it had or appeared to have had no neck. Its head sat upon shoulders in a strange way, and while it was watching them, it turned its whole body, and its hair was brown and matted like a stray dog. After they passed, she watched it in the rearview mirror. She later said, It stepped out from the ditch on the side of the road with one large step. It stepped all the way to the center line of the road, and one more step, and then it cleared the road and the ditch with the other step. It had cleared about 20 feet and the trees and disappeared out of sight. The whole time, she said, her sister was holding her arm, crying and jabbering. But Ron was in the back seat and slept through the whole thing. Hmm. Sounds uh, eerily similar to Greg's. Encounter. I was going to say that. Yeah, That's from I season that. one and in the intro of our show, Greg. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it does sound very similar to that. And, you know, they mentioned the matted fur. Um, to be relevant with the times. That video that's been going around, what was that, a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. with the col the train in Colorado, there wasn't a single piece of matted fur it looked like on that video. It's highly grainy. It, it is highly grainy. But Check it, out our Cryptids and Coffee video to get our opinions on that. Yeah, it's true. From, uh, on Facebook. From On Facebook from October... Uh, 17th. Is it October 17th when we recorded that? Yes. 
Oh, yes, you're right, actually. Now that I checked the logs, you're right. October 17th. Yes. I had to check the logs. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think we're both agreeing Bigfoot. Oh, 100%. I didn't think there was any disagreements. I yeah. just was saying that I want to try to put, if we can, a name to all these. Oh, yeah. Okay, gotcha. So Bigfoot. Yeah, I think Bigfoot for sure. I mean, like I said, it's very similar to Greg's. They drove by, it just stood and watched, and once they passed, crossed over. Mm -hmm. But it also seemed like it wanted them to, it, it wanted to be noticed. Or didn't care. Right, it didn't care so to be. So uh, I think we're both big believers in that the only 99% of the time when you see a Bigfoot, it either let you see it mm -hmm. or didn't care that you seen it. Right, yeah, which is the same thing. Kind of. You know, pretty much. Sometimes, well, I guess sometimes they want you to see them. True. They go out of their yeah. way to be noticed. Yes. Whether that's distract you from other things, because mm -hmm. that's normally what's happening. Like when stories of people, you know, walking down trails and stuff, and one crosses in front of like 100 yards in front on the trail. Just... It's because it doesn't want you to look behind. Exactly. It's like it's pulling your attention up there. Yeah. Uh, the second, if I ever, that ever happened to me, I'm turning around instantly because you know there's one like 10 feet behind you. <laughs> well, like, uh, you know, Les Stroud said, uh, I think it was him that said, if you ever wanted to actually catch one or see one, Put the camera on your backpack behind you. That's how you. he got his picture. Exactly, yeah. The Les Stroud picture. Of okay, Bigfoot. yeah. Because he did that, and he followed. He never turned around, and they followed him out. Yeah. He fully believes. I think I think he's correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me uh, let me get ready for this next one. It's called Too Quiet. Ooh. La Via La Morta Ooh. is the user of from Reddit. I live near the eastern Sierra Nevada mountains. I hike up there pretty much from May to October. A few years ago, I decided to hike this pretty scenic trail that leads to a huge rock slide. Slide rock boulder. <laughs> I parked and I noticed I was the only person there. I have two dogs. I get them out and we start up the trail. About a mile in, I come to a clearing with a humongous teepee-like structure. The trees are all interwoven together. I put down my walking sticks and stopped to take some pictures. I have the pictures, everybody. I will try to remember on Monday when they come out to put them on the Facebook page. Uh, same with a couple other stories. There's pictures included, which is fun for Reddit. Like That's one thing you don't get everywhere else is pictures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is definitely, uh, this is me talking. This is definitely a, ma a, a made teepee structure. That's what I was going to suggest since it was, in the trail, like, oh, yeah. Oh, it's with that massive, picture. and there's not a lot of fallen. So, there's upside down ones. And it's, I'll put the pictures you guys can all decide. To me, it's very, it's made. Whether a man made it or not is, you know, the argument. As of right now, I'm going to say it's man made, but it happens. Yeah. Some of the logs are pretty huge, though. That could have taken a team, people. Yeah. I mean, I, I, we've got drunken mate stuff. <laughs> all right. I moved up the trail after the pictures. Oh, sorry. Where was I? I may have skipped. Huge teepee. Okay. The trees were all woven together. I put down my walking stick and stopped to take some pictures. Seemed weird, but very cool. I moved up the trail after the pictures. As soon as I walked past the tree structure, I immediately felt like I was being watched and the woods went silent. I, it, was, it was so effing weird. No bugs, no birds, no small animals. Completely effing silent. I hiked by myself all the time. I don't get creeped out or really scared. I've seen bears. And I've seen cougars that are out there. But I keep on going. And I feel like it's getting way more intense. And my dogs are starting to act extremely weird. They're very experienced trail dogs. They don't normally get weirded out like that. Staying super close to me, not making a lot of noise. I then realized I had left my walking stick at this tree structure. I went, F, oh, well, I don't want to go back down there to get it. Uh, I got about a fourth mile away past the tree thing. I started feeling like being watched was unbearable. I'm thinking, okay, rationally, it's probably a big cat. So I had to go back down. The rational part of my brain told me to slow down. My flight response, nope, full speed, down a 30 to 40 degree slope. Hmm. I get down to the tree structure in the meadow. And I look down and my walking stick is gone. Like it's nowhere to be seen. It's a pretty decent, uh, which is pretty distinct because it, it was made of aspen and there was no aspen in this part of the woods. Uh -huh. I'm so effing terrified. I keep running. I feel like I'm being chased. I never saw anything. I never heard anything. 
entirely. Yes, it could have been a big cat, but the only way it started is after I passed the tree structure. I didn't. Why did my stick go missing? I never. I was nearly to the parking lot before I felt like being watched. Chase feeling left me. I never either. I never went back there. Still thinking about it gives me the creeps. Ooh, this reminds me of another uh, uh, interview we did uh, with Sean. So I get both Sean and. Okay, I'm not going to say his name because I don't think he gave us his real name for the write-in. Okay. But from out west, which is where this is out west. Right, yeah. Where he was with his dogs and had, you know, once he crossed the bridge. Oh, that's right, yeah. Which remember is that now. This ter- what could be a territorial marker. And once mm-hmm. he got past the bridge with his dogs again, it stopped. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's like, it's like it almost sh- like an infrasound type of fear. Like, that- you just know... Something's off, and I shouldn't be here. I need to leave. The other thing is we uh, the being followed or the, the feel like you're being watched thing. We right, talked about yeah. that in psychology. Yeah, it can even be caused by a possum because what your brain does constantly, and it's your subconscious. It takes pictures of every time you're looking around and compares them to previous pictures. Okay, and notices overlaps or differences. Okay, so it helps us recognize predators, or it did help us recognize predators. Yeah, basically, if you take a picture of a scenic piece of trees and you look back again in a couple seconds and something's moved, mm-hmm. that's your brain starts screaming at you, "Hey, pay attention! Yeah, something's out there." Red flags. Yeah, and that's what causes that feeling. Mm, okay. It's the unconscious trying to talk to the conscious. Yeah. Huh. Either way. Uh... Yeah, he never seen it, and I don't know how many stories we've heard of that. Like, you just the feeling of being followed, or even the feeling of being charged. You know, you're being charged, but you still see nothing. Very common. It's so. I think Bigfoot. That was what I was leaning towards. Yeah, uh, but this tree structure with the picture and everything. I mean, I don't. Though that one tree right here, and I'm pointing at things that people can't see. <laughs> on the left. It's probably about 30 feet long, and its biggest is probably about 8 inches in diameter. Yeah, big tree, but nothing a, a group of guys. It'd be very hard for us to lift. But if, you know, a group of people, wouldn't it be a problem? Because it's also the last one wedged in. Mm, okay, so maybe locking tree. the whole thing in. Yeah. Yeah. And it's we don't odd. know, and we still don't know entirely what all the tree structures do or mean for yeah. it because i'm all not guesswork yeah i'm not convinced they're all structures or like shelter structures at all whatsoever oh, i don't think they're shelter structures no if anything i think they're more territorial markers and language markers i think that and i also think they somehow deal with some they're harnessing some sort of energy by the way they're built like however drum, geometry they're made with it's just something energetic mm-hmm. like with it with the woods they're doing, I don't know, I've, a language we don't understand. I think a lot of it is just telling other Bigfoot what's happening or what's going on mm. and territorial markers. Yeah. Like a lot of the X's. Yeah. I'm a full believer that it's the X's aren't for us. It's for them. It's for them to tell them, hey, people often walk right here. Yeah. You know, don't go any further. Yeah. Hmm. All right. You ready for the next one? Yeah, I'm ready. Helicopter Hunt. Ooh. By Reddit user Amazing Banana. <laughs> Great name. Excuse me, I was laughing. It's just funny. Amazing banana. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I was at this park with my then girlfriend that has a neighborhood on one side and a few miles of pretty dense forest on the other. We were stargazing. As we sat in this opening near the neighborhood, I heard a rustling and a patch of shrubbery that sounded like a person stomping around. I immediately got up to investigate as the area is known for very... Sketchy activity, activity. Sorry, activity. <laughs> yeah, don't no free ads. Come on. When I saw what I saw, made no sense. It still feels my imagination, or it feels it still feels like I imagined it mm, or okay. something. So before I tell you the rest, already, what are you picturing? It sounds like a big human stomping around the what shrubbery right next to him. But see, shrubberies shrubs aren't that big. Shrubs can be twenty feet tall. Oh, okay. I guess not the ones I'm picturing in my head. Hmm, stomping around? Mm Mm-hmm. Could just be a deer. Well, it's on the creepy internet stories. Right, I know. So it's not a deer. Shoot, then where's this where did this happen again? Doesn't say. Okay. Trying to get a geographic sort of narrow it down. It could be anything. I mean at this point. Okay. I don't know. Let me tell you. What I saw looked like a person hunched over with a white cloth over them, walk out of the bushes. Stand on the path that goes around the entire park. I turned to my girlfriend and asked her what it looked like to her without telling her what I seen and it looked uh, what it looked like to me. And she describes it exactly as I did. Mm. 
So we hightailed it out of there, booked it in the car and got in, and we were waiting to know what the F it was, turn on the high beams in the hopes it would not, or that it would follow us. It did not. I know what it is now. You want me to say it? Sure. Fresno Nightcrawler. Hmm. Hmm. Or Mount Carmel Monster. Is it Carmel or Camel? Camel, I don't know. I always get it wrong. Whatever I say, the last time was wrong. <laughs> uh, now this is where the story gets even stranger. Ooh. We went to another park because we wanted to continue stargazing. We drove a few miles to the other park that is essentially a giant field. Now, you laugh, but he's with a girl. Yeah, I know, but if you were both... a teenage free- boy. Okay. Okay. Hormones are playing heavily in this. We went to stargaze. Stargazing. Quote, unquote. Like we talked about with the Kinderhook blob last week. Yeah, exactly. We've seen the Kinderhook blob and it took our pants. <laughs> How strange. Anyways, so we found a bench to, and sat down and managed to forget about the weird encounter. I'm going to say he forgot about the weird encounter. Yeah, yeah. After about 10 to 15 minutes of this, we suddenly saw, not heard, mind you, what appeared to be a gigantic black helicopter flying over us in the direction of the first park. Ooh, okay. So a helicopter's right over top of them, giant. Mm-hmm. They do not hear it. They only see it. That's odd. Uh, extremely. The That's thing was completely silent. Mm. No noise at all. It was not able to. F- or was not able to find any pictures online that can come close to what it looked like. But if you're familiar with Halo Reach, it kind of looked like a falcon, which is you know it's a video game. Look up the falcon. They kind of it looks more like a spaceship. Okay. A helicopter shaped spaceship. Spaceship. Okay. Uh, the thing maneuvered like nothing ever seen. Granted, I don't know much about aviation, but it dipped over a tree line at an angle that was so steep that we thought it was going to crash. The weirdest part of all, there was somebody else in the park, in the, or in the second park, an old woman walking her dog. She didn't react to anything. Or like She didn't see the helicopter. She didn't react to it. It was by far the strangest night of my life. I have yet to return to either park. I don't really have plans to do so. It's really some strange effing stuff out there, man. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's a fact. So they see this thing, hmm. and they don't describe it well. Yeah. it's a. It looks like a man hunched over with a, with cloth. a white cloth draped over him. Yeah. Fresno Nightcrawler is a good is a good one. What in the heck are you thinking? That, no, that's I didn't have one. Oh, okay. That's about the only thing I could think mm-hmm. of because, you know, white rustling around in the, you know, Or brush. escape scientist transforming into a monster. <laughs> Could be that too. It could be that he's halfway in between. He mm-hmm. escaped. Yeah, and now they're like, "All right, we got to bring him back. Bring him back, man." Because we've heard the you know the black helicopter stories. You know, retri- what would we call that episode? Uh, something retrieval, retrieval, uh, whatever service. I don't know. I have no idea what you're talking about. The black helicopters that flew into like the national parks to retrieve like we cryptid did an episode on this creatures. Yeah. They they go in. We named it like. See, this is the first time this has ever happened. Oh, yeah. Or you remember? I an remember episode something. And I don't remember the they come cryptid in the, retrieval unit. Yes, that's it's it. on Patreon. Oh, it's Patreon. Only. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was like our third Patreon episode. Yeah. See, uh, some things get lo- they get everything goes in the vault up there. It's just retrieving it yeah. is my problem. Yeah, cryptid retrieval unit. Yes, I do remember the silent black helicopters. Yeah, because it also happened with the giant sheep kill. Uh, out west, ah. six thousand sheep died from a gov- quote unquote government experiment. Right. They didn't admit to for till years later. Right, yeah. But they, all the people seen silent black helicopters, mm-hmm. and these silent black helicopters are seen constantly with mm-hmm. UFOs and the paranormal events. I uh, mean, it, whether it's the U.S. Army or not is a big question, or U.S. government or not is right. a big question. It probably is. I don't know at this point. I think most of the government is, or maybe not government, but probably U.S. military industrial complex. Now that's different. I know, because <laughs> they control the government, or most part, most portions of it. I don't even think they control. They just sidestep it. They don't well, need it. I think they're. I'm pretty sure they. Uh, yeah, that's different. different Anyways, different. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts? You think Fresno and then the government? It could be Fresno, or like you said, an escapee. Like whether or not an it's experiment. a scientist, but yeah, an escape parent. Then you're like, uh, we got a retrieval, mm-hmm. retrieve. But it could be Fresno. Okay. Now I'm going to try to read this. This is a, I believe, Alaskan name. Oh. Yes. I thought you were going to say Alaskan bullworm. Uh, kind of. The that, This person graciously provided a pronunciation guide. The Aholic. 
Okay. It's not spelled anything like that. I would have never got it in a hundred years. Okay. It's A G U L A apostrophe A Q. Yeah, yeah. A holic. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so Nicole exciting by drifting and dreaming. Reddit user. I grew up in Kodiak, which is an island off the coast of Aust- or Alaska, I must say mm-hmm. Australia, <laughs> with a small town and a couple of small villages surrounding the island. You can't get there unless you take the ferry or hop on a plane. Naturally, there really wasn't much to do back in high school. I spent my time smoking out with my buddies and walking on the trails. Uh, this is me talking. Cody has the biggest bears on the planet. Yes, they do. And there's these high school kids who are out there smoking and walking around on the trails. <laughs> well. So one normal day, I thought it would be uh, great to pick up one of my already paranoid friends. So we're going to refer to him as friend A. So we're going to talk about friend A and friend B. This okay. is the story. The native, now, El Quick, El Quick is how I pronounce it, but it's not right. Elders are the native Alaskans oh, okay. of the Kodiak Island. The El Quick elders always told stories of the El which are very similar to skinwalkers. These beings were once humans who were cast out of their villages and turned to black magic to survive in the unforgiving wilderness. Mm. You can't talk about them, and you are, you rarely would ever get the opportunity, or you cannot talk about them, and you'd rarely get the opportunity to hear about somebody else's personal experience. Okay. So once again, very like he said, very similar to skinwalkers of the Western tribes. Yeah. I thought to myself, it would be a very funny to scare the crap out of friend A, right? So I tell him everything that I know about the being, which uh, when we were out strolling through the trails, the sun starts to go down, and we're all getting a bit creeped out. Uh, so friend B does join the group. He doesn't say that, but there's three of them is the next line. So okay. the three of us decide to start heading him back to the car. As friend A is taking us home, friend B asks if he could buy if we could buy him a pack of cigarettes. He just needs to run in and grab his ten dollar bill from his room. So friend A and I listen to some tunes while we wait for him. He returns surprisingly quick and says, "I've only got three dollars. Maybe tomorrow, man." We go, "Okay, no problem." We say our goodbyes and we head uh, towards my house so he could drop me off. As I was sitting down on my bed, I get a text from friend B. He says, "Hey, where'd you guys go?" I thought we were getting cigarettes. Hmm, I replied, trying to see if he really forgot our conversation not even 10 minutes prior. Mm -hmm. He was adamant. He just ran inside, tore his room apart, looking for his money. And by the time he found it, he ran outside and saw we'd already left. Hmm. He thought we ditched him. Right. So I I tell him that that I could still get him his smokes and walked over to his house to see if he's just effing with me. I stand by his, or we stand by, he still stands by his story to this day, and I believe him. The dude was partial or was paralyzed by the prank over the cigarettes. Thinking back to it, we were talking about it the whole afternoon before. Never spoke about the being until that day. Hmm. So, and I looked a little bit into this one. That's a big one, like skinwalkers. When you talk about them, they come. Oh, okay. So that's what I think his, he, he was getting at by the, the end of it. Yeah. Was he would talk about it literally for hours. Yeah. And brought it in. That's that's scary. So, like a doppelganger entity mm-hmm. mimicked him. Yes. And didn't we just talk about this? Yes. Dang, that's crazy overlap. Yes. Well, it sounds like it to me. That's what that is. Yeah, I would say it's uh, the a whole lick. But why didn't it want him? Why was it? Why did you know? What was the intention behind that to make them leave? Did it want him all alone? I don't know. I don't know if there was this. First off, this scary intention, mm-hmm. like as in a harmful intention. Yeah. It may have been the first one to, hey, stop talking about me. Oh. Like proof. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. That's a creepy one. I would, I would especially be sticking to his story like years and years later. Mm-hmm. All right. You ready for this next one? Oh, yeah. I was born ready. So it's just titled Making the Nightly Rounds. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is my second favorite one on this list. Okay. Because the thing is just so fun. Fun? Yeah. All right, let's see. Let's. This is by Reddit user. Bones full of pock brocks. Okay. All right, interesting. When I was a young teen, I was sitting on the floor of my mom's bedroom playing Animal Crossing when it got dark out. I didn't have the light on because I was there for several daylight hours. So when it got dark, I only had the hallway light. I remember looking out the window to my left because I saw movement, but nothing was there. 
just a tree branch next to my porch slightly shaking. I brushed it off, but then I remembered we didn't have any trees in our backyard. (laughs) It was about a half mile from an old farmland, or of old farmland. I started, I stared at the branch trying to figure out what it was coming from, and my eyes trailed it until it came to the end against a white oval-like, or oval-like surface. I was squinting to see what it was when it moved. It turned, and it looked at me. And then it slowly lumbered off. So I had eyes? Yeah. Okay. Second story window. Yes. Very big animal. Or, yes. Thing. Thing. I figured I had seen a deer of some with some kind of color mutation, and my eyes were just messing with me Pie because ball. I didn't have my glasses on. I get that. You know, when you're looking, and it can look very smudgy, depending on what eye problem you have. We normally had a herd or two of deer grazing in my backyard. It wasn't until later I realized that none of the herds had showed up during this time and I saw this thing. None of the deer had a color mutation either, at least on the regular basis they didn't. I ignored it for a few days. But then about a week later, I was sleeping when I woke up in the middle of the night. I don't know what woke me up, but I have a large window next to my bed and I leave, I leave the blinds open because my dog likes to look out the window. I looked at my dog and he was on high alert looking at the window. I grabbed my glasses and seen what he was looking at and what he was fixated on and saw the thing again. I got a better look at it this time. It had fur so black that its body wasn't really visible, only having the light from the moon and the garage light on the side. I figured I was dreaming or something, but then it moved across my yard towards the empty field. My dog had tracked it. My dog was, sh- or my dog was shivering slightly. I normally barks at the smallest thing, but it seems to be trying to keep itself quiet. I grabbed my sketchbook and my dresser and my bed and made a quick drawing of it. I never felt scared of whatever this thing was, just kind of peaceful. Hmm. In a way, it seemed like it was just patrolling the area and happened to catch me on its nightly rounds. Hmm. This thing is crazy looking. Oh, okay. So I'm going to try to describe this for everybody at home. Uh, this is not, the drawing that he yes. submitted. And it's humongous. So it's on you know, second story window. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I will try to make sure to post the drawing onto Facebook. So next, uh, the Monday this comes out, look on the Facebook. This thing is a large snake-like body covered in black fur until uh, you get to the face. And they don't draw it all as the jet black, but this is all supposed to be jet black, the whole body. Gotcha. So he, never, uh, he or she never seen the body until the that full, last time. Yeah, yeah. Its head is a hard oval surface with two giant black eyes. Okay. It has what seems to be gigantic antlers that she thought were the trees. And it has two wooden-like arms. Wood? That's what it looks like in the picture. Oh, okay. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. It's whatever the antlers are made out of is the same thing that looks like the arms are made out of. Okay. So she says she never felt scared of this thing. Which is odd. Peaceful. And we've talked about on the show several times about, quote unquote, forest guardians. Okay. And I kind of think that's what she ran into. And it's just like kind of coming back to check her out or something? No, not her in particular. So (laughs) old legends, especially in Europe, talk about forest guardians kind of like she kind of described. Making rounds. Mm-hmm. They have their domain. They protect. A lot of times they don't even interfere with people. I do have a question, though, with it. Yeah. Didn't she say we didn't have any trees in our backyard? Yeah. So is this thing like summoning a tree or what? What do you mean? Because it's in a tree in that picture. I think that was just artistic. But And then how was it up to the second? It was that big. Hmm. So there was. This is the one picture I took of it. She has like nine of them she drew. Yeah. Okay. The one is it just is like crawling on its tail. Yeah. Man, this is a weird one. I don't even know. So it's know. like a giant fuzzy snake. With, with a Wendigo head. With a Wendigo head. The modern day Wendigo head. But not, she didn't feel scared of it. It just, every time she looked out, she just looked and seen it and it kind of looked at her and just kept on going. Yeah. Had really no interest in her. It also reminds me of a, the BFG story mm-hmm. where it's like just peeking in the windows, like in the middle of the night. Reminds Big me of that. friendly giant. Yeah. He was a good one. Yeah. So what do you think? I don't know on this one. So this one, it, this is the picture that I have. It has a lot of artistic, like the lantern on its tail. Yeah. It didn't have a lantern on its tail. Oh, okay. She just she drew this thing like a hundred times. Gotcha. So it's probably her best drawing. It's the one that had color. Gotcha. 
And it needed a lantern. I, I mean, I think assume it's a little girl, a oh, young okay. girl. Yeah. What What are your thoughts? Uh, I mean, I really don't know. I've never. We've never talked about anything like this. No, that's why I, this was my second favorite one. Yeah, I don't know where this one falls. I think Forest Elemental mm, or okay. Forest Protector. Yeah, uh, I do think that sometimes these things manifest out of nature, maybe not even fully real. That they are the representation of the local environment. Yeah, and uh, doesn't say, but from the some of the pictures she drew, it seems like they're definitely in a northern state. Okay, and this thing definitely seems like a northern state. Creature. creature, yeah, big for black fur, yeah, white face, hmm, almost, almost old style dragons with deer, like antlers. Asian, well, Asian dragons. Oh yeah, they do have like the little long antlers. bodies, and a lot of times they're covered in fur. Yeah, only front arms and antlers. What if these are dragon? Oh, if this is a dragon, that could be. Maybe she has treasure, and it. it's like and same with the Maori it. people. Yeah, they have the long serpent like dragons as well. Yeah, it's true too. So this could be a dragon. I'm could going for forest elemental, but yeah, because it didn't do anything for how large it was. Right, that's the odd part. It just the only time it really looked at her is when it when she caught it. Because mm-hmm. usually they'll react or something, mm-hmm. or it's like scary. And uh, there's this show uh, called Hildy, and it's funny you mentioned giants. So it's like this weird little cartoon that me and Emily have watched like mm-hmm. twice now. Mm-hmm. It's got trolls and a lot of Scandinavian legends of okay. giants that they kind of mixed in with modern stuff. Yeah. But like it's all real to everybody. Okay. Because like, it's just a part of life. Oh, okay. I gotcha. Kind of like the Troll Hunter movie where it's. Yeah, but a lot more friendly. Like the trolls right. do, like they say they eat people. But it's, they've never eaten somebody. Like there's never anybody that's actually eaten by a troll. They're assimilated yeah. into society. Gotcha. It's definitely odd. But they had super giants in there, like old earth giants is really what they called them. Okay. Where there was normal giants that were like size of big trees. Right. And then there was these ones the size of mountains. Yeah. And like, they all left because there's too many people and they felt bad for stepping on people's villages. Oh. But that's you got, a, yeah, that's a different take on it. But this kind of reminds me of one of those. The super giants? Like this old style giants from a different world. Okay. A different time. A different, yeah. And there's just a few of them left. Dragons. Which it, at that point could be the same thing. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. That's what I'm going with. It could. You, I mean, what if it's just some weird creature, like it's actual animal? No, it could be. I don't know. Wouldn't that be nuts if that thing is like roaming around? Uh, it could be a dinosaur. Psh, yeah. We don't know what they look like. No, exactly. There could be legs under there. There probably is. It just dressed up for winter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's winter coats on. All right. So remember, if you want to see these pictures, go to Facebook on Monday. I'm making it Jay's responsibility. You mean go to Facebook. Just go to Facebook. On Monday. It doesn't have to be on Monday. Yeah. People I, listen to these on different days of the week. But I'm saying it'll be on Monday. It'll be published on Monday the same day this oh, comes gotcha. out. Oh, gotcha. Now I understand. <laughs> it's not just going to be up there on Monday. Yeah, that's why I was like, oh. <laughs> no, okay. My next one. You ready for this one? Yeah. It's by Strawberry92. Okay. Flying Manta Ray. Oh, I've heard this one before. <laughs> no, I've never. This one's a completely different one. In my research, I found this. You oh, ready? Okay. Uh, I was walking my dog, and I start, he started woofing and barking at the house across the street. I slowed down, trying to get a look at what he was seeing. There was a white, grayish, boomerang-shaped thing flapping its, quote-unquote, wings really slow, like a manta ray in the water. But it was moving too fast, and it was circling the neighbor's house. It zoomed around the ha- house and disappeared into the backyard, going back and forth around maybe five times since I stood there staring at whatever it was. It was a nightmare, but there was enough light to see that it didn't have any definable features. It was more just an amorphous boomerang-shaped thing. Mm. It was flying with one of its wings pointed towards the ground and then one towards the sky, vertically. People say it was it could have been an owl or a bat or another type of bird, but it didn't have feathers. It had definite edges. It didn't have eye or yeah, it had defined eyes or a head or anything like that of any animals. It just it was a diffuse oblong, unnatural shape, less than 100 feet away from me, mm-hmm. moving way too fast. Now it slowed its wings with, while flapping. And then it disappeared behind the house. To this day, I'm not sure what I saw or even if it was truly what I saw. I, pose, I, pose, uh, I, I propose of it being a, visit, a, vid, a vivid hallucination. It was almost scary, but my dog saw it too. I swear on my mother's grave, I saw something that night. And this, the Strawberry 92 obviously has never heard of any of these things. Right. And does not realize how common they are. And he, That's why this one's my favorite. Hit the nail it's, on the head with it being a... Yeah. 
ma- ma- atmospheric manta ray. And he doesn't believe that. Yeah. He thinks that it was a hallucination. But even though the dog saw yeah. it. Yeah. It just was something that really spoke to me. You know, oh, was, yeah. Especially, you know, atmospheric creatures are a thing. I mean, they are. So there you go. We haven't known one in a while, and there's one sneaked in for you. There we are. I don't even have to say. Yeah, it's definitely. I mean, he's seen a manta ray. Mm-hmm. I agree. 100%. All right. You ready for this? Second to last one. Okay. All right. Sorry, no. We still have a bunch. I lied. This one just made me laugh. Cornfield creature. Oh, okay. Our now we're namesake. Hit, now we're yeah. Now we're hitting home here. So I used to work at a cheese factory on the edge of a cornfield in <laughs> Southwest Minnesota. Okay. Is there anything? This sounds like it should be in Wisconsin, doesn't it? Well, Southwest Minnesota, it's pretty much Wisconsin. It's up there, yeah. I mean, but doesn't it sound like I worked at a cheese factory and this creature came out of the cornfield? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, there was a series of days in the summer of 05 and 04, I'm sorry, 04 and 05, where it was so hot, the milk delivery to us in the trucks would evaporate before we got it out. The milk? Yeah. Milk evaporated? Yeah, do you remember that, 04 and 05? That was the hard droughts where like Hog Creek locally dried up completely. It's hard to remember. Yeah, I remember. Well, we had the creek at that time at the house. It was gone. <laughs> like, there was no water. Nothing at all? Yeah. It was so hot. Anyways, it would evaporate before they got it. Uh... The dearth of the milk denied us any actual labor, but management wouldn't let us uh, not come into work. So we'd show up and mess around all shift. I was working the nights at this time. It was 2 or 3 a.m. when I was unloading the docks, watching bats fly in the floodlights because I liked being out in the cool night air. The corner was about shoulder height at this time. You know, 5 foot 10 is what he says. As I watched the bats, I looked over to the edge of the cornfield. Something was moving there. It was the size of a small child. And very, very skinny. It was pale, with something that looked like a head straight out or straight black hair. It moved in a sort of jerky gait, like somebody dancing the robot badly. It moved in chunks, legs, then hips, then torso, then shoulders, then neck, then finally head. It was looking back into the cornfield, or at least it felt like that. I felt prickly all over. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a heroin addict or something at first. <laughs> Doing the robot. Uh, but you never, no, have you ever seen a, somebody no, strung out? I do, yeah. I just, yeah. When I was in Chicago all the time, that's what they look like. Oh, gosh. They can't move. No, it's bad. It's really sad. Uh, I didn't move. It didn't move like a person, though. Gradually, step by step, it moved towards me, letting out curious, or letting my curiosity beat my fear. I moved towards the edge of the dock with the raised, and when it raised a few feet off the ground. <laughs> Or sorry, which was raised a few feet off the ground. Oh, okay, okay. Much different. Yes, it is. When I got within a few feet of the edge, and the thing looked at me. I was paralyzed. I couldn't. I could have run, but I was struck somewhere between terrified and intrigued. It moved its face, still pointed at me. I wrenched my body, and it was discon- or disconcerting. Jerky movements towards the cornfield and went to it. I tried to watch where the field it moved as it passed, but the corn remained perfectly still. I noticed that all the crickets were silent. After a few minutes, nothing happened. I stood out there for an hour and never came back. I never saw it again. Mm, another, another encounter where everything goes silent. Mm-hmm. And very odd, this like humanoid, black-haired thing. Right. Yeah. Almost like a lady in the lake thing, but lady of the corn. <laughs> lady of the corn. Lady of the corn. That might be one of our special Patreon members. Lady of the corn. There we Just go. Very fitting. All right, forest cryptid. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. My strange story took place on the 26th of September, 2009. <gasps> That's my birthday. Is it? Yes. No. It is. I did not pick that because of that. Oh, yeah, right. My church was in the retreat in Indiana in a forest. The place we stayed at was in a small building in the center of the forest. If they wouldn't have said Indiana, I would have thought this was my church camp. <laughs> we decided to eventually go out and play in the forest with the children. So he came back up with a game to play. It was like police. The kids were the police, and we would pick an adult to be the hostage. So when we began the game, we had to find the adult hiding in the forest in the middle of the night. Uh, So we started going around the back of the buildings, and we spotted a tall figure. It 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 was at least six feet tall. It was running towards the trees where there were a small opening area in the tall grass that goes up to your knees. It ran with its arms at its sides. It stopped at the edge of the tall grass as if it was waiting for us to get closer. We chased after it, thinking it was one of the adults. 
when we finally, uh, when we were finally a few yards away, it dove into the grass and started to crawl very fast. Oh, almost like a snake. Ooh. We were we we got super weirded out, but it stood up again, staring at us. When it got across the tall grass, it began to climb a tree. It looked somewhere like a deformed cat-like animal when it, when it was climbing. And then a few moments later, a kid yelled, I see him, and was pointing at the opposite direction. We saw a small or similar figure running a couple of yards away, so we chased it. But then it vanished behind a tree. Mm -hmm. Turns out, a few minutes later, we found the actual adult hiding in the parking lot in the front of the building the whole time. So who the hell knows what we were chasing in the forest at night? At least 15 kids saw the thing, so I know I'm not crazy. Maybe it climbed the tree when I'm behind it? Like really fast? It was a different thing. It was like... Oh, gotcha. So they they chased the first one. Right, yeah. And then they turned around and seen a different thing running and then climbed up and disappeared it, behind a tree. Yeah, that's weird. So kind of... It's like trickery going on. Almost hide behind stuff. Yeah. Like, stick man. Yeah. yeah. Stick man hide behind where it's like extremely, extremely creepy. Oh, well, we're way past that. Oh, okay. That's fine. Jay was motioning for us to do the ad break. Yes. And that was about 30 minutes ago. Oh, okay. Whoops. It's okay. You guys, just so you know, we don't ever know. Wait, well, no. I don't know. I don't uh, even know how long we've been talking on the uh, sharing stories here. 51 minutes. Dang, okay. So what do you think about this weird entity? So I was thinking Bigfoot. At and first? At first. Until it crawled through the grass like a snake. Then crawled up a tree and looked like a cat monster. You know what? Um, okay, so there's this video. I don't remember when it came out. I think it was pre our doing this podcast. It was this video of this like uh, a black thing like in the water that these people were like filming and and following, and it moved like a snake through the water. But then it came out of the water, but it was like flat on the ground like a shadow. And it you showed me this recently. Recently, the last couple months. I feel like this is older though. Then maybe I seen it on my own because it was like in a ditch. Yep, I, but it started out in water, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was like in a wet ditch. And, and they were like kind of chasing it, trying to follow it, and yeah. then it just kind of disappeared into the... Yeah. And they didn't know where it went. That's what this reminds me of. Very... Uh, and I think the hide behind's a real thing. Yeah. Whatever it is, but these... these Almost, they go from like 3D to 2D. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly the best way to describe it. Like a shadow. Like it mm -hmm. turns into a shadow. I don't know what... I don't... That's what I think it... Something similar to that, but what are those things... No idea. Scary. <laughs> That's for sure. Scary. Nothing you really want to deal with. No. All right. Second to last one. Okay. The prime hook swamp creature. Oh. I was driving on Broadkill Road in Broadkill Beach, Delaware, around dusk in July 2007. The road borders a swamp area. Standing on the side of the road by the swamp, my daughter and I saw a creature like we've never seen before. It stood about two and a half to three feet tall with long legs, a tan body, a flat, almost puggish face, and a long tail. <laughs> it had small ears and looked to be about 30 pounds. My other daughter and her friend saw the same animal the year before around the same area, except at night and it ran in front of their car. I asked the lady who owned the Broadkill Beach store about it, and she said they had seen it once in the same, or, and she was on a dirt bike and her dad in the area years before. They both, uh, both her and her dad had no idea what it was, even though she was raised around Broadkill area. She said, we were lucky to have spotted. Only very few people have ever seen it. Went to the Prime Hook Reserve, which was a swampy area, which is what the swampy area is called. Uh, they have a museum, and they had no idea what it could be. I wonder if anybody else has seen what the heck this thing is. Mm. Sounds like some sort of... I don't want to say monkey or something. Monkey. It sounds like a monkey. Yeah. With the pug face like and the tail. Yeah. But what kind though? That's in Delaware, so none. Well, I mean, I would. My, my guess was an escape pet. That's. But that's at thirty pounds, that's pretty big. I mean, but there's, no, there's a lot of monkeys. At yeah, 30 true. Pounds. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of monkeys. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a monkey. That's what I. Th I mean, that's what I immediately said to Not me. Not a but, devil monkey, but just no, a just monkey. a regular one. But probably escape pet. Something. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to think of some puggish face. Most of them. Really? Okay. A yeah. lot of monkeys True. have flat faces. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I think. It's monkey. I'm going monkey. Which, for Delaware, that's a cryptid. That's, I mean, should not be monkeys. <laughs> no. <laughs> My last one. Are you ready? Oh, maybe it's that missing North American ape species. Could be. Could okay. be. Okay, but yes, I'm ready for the last one. Florida sea monster. Oh, you had to end on a sea monster. Of course. Always. 
you know, our most famous Florida sea monster. Is okay or no, 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 don't tell me the Kelpie. Um, Kelpie? No. Oh, that's Florida though, right? Kudzu Kelpie is Florida, but that's yeah. a land monster. Oh, okay. Um, it's Florida sea monster. Pinky. Oh, yeah, duh. But Pinky. he's no monster. Uh, he was, that's our friend. He, he bodied a manatee. That's, well, sometimes they right. need put in their place. This story takes place, I think, in the summer of 1995, making me nine years old. Practically every other year, my family would take a trip to Florida. We would usually do the Disney World, but then my mother got sick of that. So that year, we actually didn't go to Disney, uh, to my sister's and my in my dismay. <laughs> oh, on one of these days, we were on the beach. I don't remember what the beach was called, but we were sitting next to us. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. But the people sitting next to us mentioned it being the bottom tip of Florida. Anyway, or after a while, nothing happened. Everybody was either in the ocean or sunbathing silently. A woman sitting to my left of us started pointing past us to our right, asking, what is that? What is that? We all turned and looked to our surprise in the vacant corner of the beach. There were no people down there, but there, but what was there was something extremely strange. We all got up to get a better look, very quickly forming a crowd around the thing. It had, If I had to describe the creature we saw in one word, it would be cartoonish. I will never forget what it looked like. It was green and looked like a ball of slime mm-hmm. of the size of a basketball. But it had tentacles resting on the ground around it with two long tail-like tentacles sticking out of the back of it. The thing that was what's most bizarre, what made it look most cartoonish, was its eyes, which were on stalks that had stood about a foot off its body. The eyes looked creepy, creepily human and just looked at us with almost disturn. The other strange thing about it was its mouth. It had seemed to, it, which never seemed to close. And then were expected to be teeth, or and where you'd expect to see teeth were two shaped fleshy protrusions. Okay. Gums. Yeah. No one even, no one, not even the creature, seemed scared. And after a while, they lazily slithered back into the ocean. Mm, okay. After roughly 10 eyewitnesses of the thing, they all spent most of their time talking about what it must have been. One idea that it was a parasite organism from a much larger creature, one also possibly never ID'd. Mm. So Now, what's just screaming to you? Anything? Yeah, a couple. Actually, so a couple things. Because, yeah, I don't know. The ocean's weird. Exactly. First thing that screams at me is cone snail. Okay. Yeah, they, their eyes. They have giant eye stalks that look just like people. Yeah. If you don't believe me, everybody, look up a cone snail's eyes. They look like people. Yeah. They look just like people. They also have giant mouths. Most people don't realize. They keep them in their shells most of the time. Okay. Uh, but they said it was a big ball of slime. Are cone snails connected to their shells physically? Yes. And so it's part of their all, body. All mollusk are. Just, okay, making sure. Yes. Not like a Not hermit crabs. crab. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all mollusks are connected to their shells. Okay. So this big ball of slime, and I have a couple thoughts about the slime. Uh, it seems like this thing washed up on the beach and was trying to go back. So bottom-dwelling animals, this happens pretty common. You know, a big wave pushes yeah. them out. And oh, yeah. If they're able to, they'll crawl back. If not, you know, they get stuck and die. Mm-hmm. The ocean is full of undiscovered species. This thing's about the size of a basketball, so it's bigger than almost all mollusk. Okay. But this may not be a cone snail. This may be a close cousin that, as far as I know, has only been documented in the northern oceans and is extremely rare and absolutely massive. Which is? The giant sea slug. Okay. They get up to 20 pounds. They're a ball of snot. Uh, yeah, look them up. I am right now. They, they <laughs> get basketball size. This is literally how other people have described them. They have human-like eyes, and they have massive mouths with no teeth. Oh, yeah, you're actually hitting it right. Black sea hare? Yeah, yep. or the giant the giant sea slug. Right, yes, yes. They're part of the sea hares, which are sea slugs. Yeah, yeah, it does. Big ball of slime. Yeah, big ball of slime. It does look like that, especially out of water. But they're only native to the northern oceans. Mm, okay. But what's special about Florida? The, the oh, don't tell me, the jet stream. Yes. Yes. So I don't think one of them, they don't swim. They kind of, they, they're crawlers. They okay. They don't swim. But what could have happened is their larval state, which is drifters, uh-huh. could have gotten the current and ended up in Florida. Okay. I don't know if it's possible for them to survive in such warm waters. 
because they're kind of geared towards the cold stuff, tidal okay. pools. Yeah. Uh, but who knows? But if 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 it did get, let's say it gets moved or pushed around by a jet, let's say something went and scooped it up and then like swam off and realized, Ugh, and spit it out. Now, you ruined my ending. What? So gray whales are shift feeders, or shifting feeders. <laughs> so they take big scoops of the bottom. Uh-huh. And they shift through the sand and take all the little crustaceans and stuff, and that's what they eat. Yeah, and then they whales are the, the only living whales that do this. Okay. So I kind of think, because we what do we know about Florida with whales? It's their oh, hangout ground. Yeah. Especially these these tran, you know, these transient species. And specifically where? You said Florida. Like, I know, but where at in Florida? Uh Daytona is where most of this is, but And is that on the bottom tip? Like close that's, to the yeah, bottom? It's close to the bottom. There you go. So what if this thing hitched a ride on a gray whale mm-hmm. trying to eat it? Yeah. And it just got stuck somewhere on the thing. And once it pulled off into the shallows, it's like hopped off. And, yeah. And then it washed up on mm-hmm. the beach. Because I've been on the beach uh, in Myrtle Beach. Remember this? I vividly remember this as a little kid. Didn't have a creature or nothing. But as far as being washed up on the shore, um, dad used to do this. I was afraid to like to go out in the ocean because I just, you couldn't see under the water. So that always freaked me out. So my dad picked me up, carried me out as far as he could to where he was still standing, and then just dumped me out. And, and then he walked back. So I had to swim back. I had to sur- basically survive. And I remember I got back just to where I was tall enough to touch the ground. And I'm panicking, trying to get back. So I was low, a wave, boom, crashes, hits me in the back, knocks me underwater. And I just, I remember opening my eyes, but just getting, I couldn't do nothing. And I just remember getting pushed around by the water. And then before I knew it, the water receded and I'm laying on the beach. I am I got pushed all the way up to the beach, just laying there. And under no, I was getting physically like pummeled by mm-hmm. the water. I couldn't do nothing and then washed up on the beach. So I can see something small getting caught up in some of that. It's just getting washed up. So let's address the only problem with my theory. Okay. Is the tentacles. Oh yeah, the tentacles. So giant sea hares don't have tentacles. N- no. But you know what they do? What? As a defensive measure, they create excess amounts of mucus. Mm. And it rolls up and it looks like tendrils. Tentacles. Yep. So if this thing's already getting pummeled by the surf, yep, and has already been hooked up to a whale, whale. <laughs> it's very stressed. I think these guys seen a giant sea hare. Now you see the black, yeah, yeah. I mean they're humongous. Yeah, they're. they're this, I have a picture of a man holding one. Yeah, which uh, that man isn't familiar, is he? Yeah, that's Coyote Peterson. That's what I thought. Yeah, that's why. I can, that's why I showed that to you. Uh, so this one might not be real. So <laughs> let's use a different. But they picture. get absolutely massive, and they're actually endangered. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, due to it's just, definitely basketball sized. Oh, they get bigger than that. They used to get bigger than that. Okay, there's some historical reports of them being like forty pounds. And there's no there's and what we know with the ocean, there's no reason those things aren't still this those forty pounders aren't still around. Yeah, no reason to they have a not. lot of problems with pollution and habitat destruction. Yeah, they're very. That's my only problem with my theory, is those guys are very uh, habitat specialized. Mm-hmm. So for <laughs> them to be drifting down there or whatever would be very well. The hitch and ride theory though is. That's also a thing. It's just, it's hard. You know, that's all, that's thousands of miles. Right. But it's, who knows? Anything could be possible. <laughs> but so I think that's what they've seen. Yeah. There's some type of giant sea slug. If you could, if you could mark it off as an actual creature that we know exists. Yeah. That one fits the bill. Conches also have eyes. Mm-hmm, but the shell. And the only thing I can think of that is if it got swallowed by something. And so what whales would do, uh, if they swallow, they actually cover stuff in mucus to make it easier to digest. Is that where ambergris comes yes. from? Yeah. Ambergris. Uh, but yeah, that's, it's, so that could be why it gave it slimy appearances. Right. It was in the belly of something that was trying to digest it, didn't like it, and threw it up. Yeah. I had that thought earlier too with it being when you said snail. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, it could be. And the snail's just covered in mucus. Yeah. So people can't really tell what's underneath like the shell. Right. Yeah. It just it looks like could a blob. Be the giant sea hares. There yeah. could also be a whole undocumented species in Florida of giant sea hares. Wait, where was this again? What was it called? You said something hook, right? No, that's the previous Dang one. Dang it. All right. I was like, <gasps> Kinder Hook. It's like, a whole different area. I, yeah, I know, but it had a hook in the name. Yeah. Maybe there's a, some relevance to it. So that's why I ended with this one is because yeah. it's the only one I could add some right. pizzazz well, to. Well, it fits your MO, you know. Uh, but I think – and then there's that possibility too. There's they discovered a species of giant sea hare that's coastal, that's yeah. tropical. Yeah. And that's not been documented. Or if it has been documented, we talked about this with the giant centipede, the new giant centipede species, mm-hmm. uh, Scolopedra, uh, Amaz- Scolopedra giganti, being separate from Scolopedra amazoni. Yeah. 
they just thought they were both juveniles. They were discovering juveniles of both species that look so similar. Mm -hmm. So what if that's happening here is juveniles of these guys are being mistaken for a different sea hare. Yeah. Adult other sea hares. Yeah. 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 So in that, we've talked about the Trinity's Alps giant. Sound, it's a common thing, especially with cryptids. Oh, yeah, happens. for sure. For sure. So what do you think? You think it's giant like, sea hair? I like that idea. I like that or the, you know, the being a cone snail, conch snail, something, yeah. some snail covered in. I just don't think people consciously recognize that a lot of these mollusks have human eyes. Right, yeah. When, when you that, said that, that's the first thing that popped in my head. Because I thought of Gary from uh, they SpongeBob. Have human eyes. Yeah, it's crazy. Look right. it up. I look just up cone snails. The sea hairs are a little hard. The giant black sea hairs are a little hard to see because they're jet black. Yeah. Uh, so it's hard to see where kind of where their eye ends and their Starts, body begins because yep. yeah, they exactly. have black eyes. Mm-hmm. But if you like, you look at high def pictures of them on white backgrounds, you'd see the eyes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, they're endangered. Dang. That's one that a lot of aquarium keepers want to keep. They yeah. just can't get a hold of. Oh, gotcha. Uh, because they're they're really cool. Uh, just hard to find. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, they're endangered. Right, so exactly. You, there's a lot of laws against having them. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Uh, and then because you can go pick them up out of tide pools. They're not hard to get. Oh, in, okay. When you go to an area if where If you at, find them, yes. You can just pick them up. Yeah. They're well, not venomous. Like uh, in that photo. Sure. Yeah, they're mostly like sea anemone eaters and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Coast, you know, they eat a lot of coastal slow mollusk, and mm-hmm. they're kind of like slow, big bullies. Gotcha. So in captivity, they're be kind of fun. They're like slow street sweepers. There you go. Yeah. That is. They'll eat whatever they can catch. Yeah. Uh, so not herbivores or anything like that, but they're not like great active carnivores. Gotcha. What you Omnivores. See them, yeah, what you see them eating is just stuff that can't swim away. <laughs> Yeah, that's something that got caught up in their path. Yeah, Stationary prey items. I like it. I think it's one of those two. Yeah. Happy Halloween. Yes, I hope this was spooky enough for you all. I have been the great and mischievous mystery. I still don't know what mischievous is, but I like it. I like it. It's an adjective. Yeah. It's a mystery. I love it. Um, and I, I think I was spooky J clone one oh three. Yes. <laughs> we'll catch you next week with more amazing spooky stuff. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Crips of the Corn podcast. Please share with a friend you think would like us. It's the best way to help our show grow. Leave a comment, rate us, a five-star review. And remember, there is always extra content on Patreon slash Crips of the Corn.com. And don't forget, stay magical.